Yeah. Hello, this is Rob Long for another edition of Pathfinder for Autism Zoomcast. And today we have uh, OTL, founder and COO of Taking the Lead Incorporated. She is Chelsea Whitaker. Good afternoon to you, Chelsea. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for joining us today. This is a, a series that we've been doing, uh, hopefully keeping people informed and, you know, without losing their minds during this pandemic. Great. How is how's how has life changed for you during this pandemic? Well, life changed. Life has changed a lot, but we are getting back on track. So, um, I have an eighty-acre farm, and we focus on different kinds of animal-assisted therapies using horses and dogs and service dog training. I have been able to continue the dog training at a safe distance, but our hippotherapy, the um, riding the horseback riding, has stopped temporarily. But right. we've I have volunteers coming to install a full sink and we'll be able to proceed in the next couple of weeks with um, COVID precautions in place. So we're getting back on track and I've actually come up with a online vocational program curriculum for parents to help coach their students at home, to help them get a job that they're passionate about. So new opportunities, different opportunities, but I'm happy to get back on track and working hands on with all the students coming up soon. That's great. That's awesome. Now, you mentioned hippotherapy. Could you explain to our viewers exactly what hippotherapy is? And I guess in, in, the, in the process, explain it to me as well. Absolutely. So um, I wish we were working with actual hippos, but we are not. Um, hippo is from the Greek word, and it's Greek for horse. So it comes for, for horse therapy. I don't know why they just couldn't say horse therapy, but that's what it is. And hippotherapy is when an occupational therapist, speech therapist, or physical therapist uses the horse's movement as a treatment tool to engage the individual in the therapy session. So a key differentiator is that we're using the horse's movement for the client's goals. So one example I have is I have one student who's been working with our vocational program. We'll call her Isabella. And she's been working with the dogs. She really wants to be a dog kennel assistant and her dream is to work with dogs every day. She has autism and she's 26. Um, but some of her main limiters is being able to focus, have the endurance to clean up after the dogs and stay on task and to stay safe and the social skills to know when to talk and when to focus back on the job. So I was adding hippotherapy to the occupational therapy goal. Um, her great goal is to be able to sleep for 30 minutes in order to be able to stop and function as a dog grooming, a dog kennel assistant. But I had a lot of trouble with, you know, around working with the dogs and, you know, not having a great strategy. Of course, as a tool, she's going to be riding the horse. The course movement help engage and focus her. And she's going to learn how to steer the horse and make stop. Now, when you're riding a horse, you have to have that balance and strength. Yeah. When a horse is 30 minutes, you reach 30,000 times. Autism will feel that input. And I've had students who like would stim a lot, you know, coming down, down the lane. They'd get on the horse and all that stimming stops their sensory systems organized by the horse's movement. So she's going to be following directions to get this horse to go. And if you don't have that intention to move forward and, and look forward, my horses are trained, they're just gonna stand there. They're gonna stand there. Um, so we're using the horse to help her build her goals for job skills um, in order to you know, be able to work independently and function, but all based on her real occupational therapy goals. You know, Chelsea, you just you, you you schooled me today. Hippo means horse. So now, when I leave this meeting, this Zoom meeting, I'm going to look up what the meaning of hippopotamus is because if hippo means horse, I got to find that out on my own. I, I, now I'm curious. I can ask that question, Rob. I can oh, answer. Oh, you can. You. Okay, go ahead. It's um, the horse of the water. Okay. All right. Yeah. I learned something today. Here you horse, go. That's exactly that's exactly what I was looking up. But my mind is dribbling. 
okay, hippopotamus, I got you, the horse of the water. So I guess that's a Greek name. Yes. Okay, all right. Now, what are the benefits, you talked about, uh, you know, with, with, with job training and things of that nature, but what are the other benefits of hippotherapy? Right. So I would say the benefits are, are three, three things. We're going to improve their focus, their balance, and their self-confidence. But it's, it's really based on each rider. So when I take a client in, we have a horse simulator. We named him Ed. And this, this moves just like a horse. It's something you sit on, and it's electronic. And when you push a button, it moves back and forth. So I have the individual like reach forward, try to turn around on this, this machine so I can assess their balance, where they are, their focus, if they can follow directions and help ease some of that fear of what a horse is going to do when they move. Right. Um, one of the main benefits is the sensory integration of the horse. That horse's movement just allows someone to really engage in their therapy session to reach their goals. Um, I've had like I was saying, I had some students, they'll come in the driveway and they'll, they just stimulate a lot, you know, so they're flapping their arms and have a hard time just listening to one step command. And then they'll get on the horse and like it opens up their posture. It lifts them up at a higher, you know, they're like 10 feet high on these horses. They're able to see more. And I've had them, I've had the experience of hearing individuals who are nonverbal speak for the first time. Oh. Um, and then as far as balance, I, I was saying that 30,000 times you weight shift on a horse just in 30 minutes, which is incredible. Now, somebody with autism might take that input and be able to focus and engage more, you know, with people around them. But somebody who has a muscular disorder is using that for sheer postural control and strength. I had a six-year-old who had cerebral palsy who was in a supported chair. She couldn't get in the car by herself. She could not walk. And just after six sessions, she took 10 steps independently all by herself because she was working on her core strength. And, you know, somebody, I might be working on their focus more. So we're going to have them take the horse through an obstacle course. They're attending to the task, looking at what's ahead. They are happy to focus and not talk to the people helping them ride because right. there's, based on their balance, we'll have one to two assistants on each side and someone leading the horse. And as the person gains balance and focus, we take away those supports. So we do have a couple of riders who are riding completely independently um, and still have their confidence and strength. But that's, that's kind of what it helps. So this individual, she was able to walk and take 10 steps, but somebody else it might help with their focus. But no matter who it is, their self-confidence just soars because if they can ride a thousand pound animal, I'm telling like Isabel, I said, if you can ride a thousand pound animal, you can certainly achieve your dream job working at a dog kennel. Like you can do this, stay confident, stay focused. And just like you got that horse to step over those three poles and stop at the red cone, you can swim for 30 minutes. You, know, you can build that endurance to do that. Um, something I do at my practice that really helps bring this home, brings the functionality of hippotherapy home is I give all my hippotherapy riders a home exercise program. And whether they're working on their fine motor coordination skills, um, I'll have, I had some students braid dog toys to improve that so they can write better. Um, I've had some students work on their posture and their core strength with like straight up exercises they can do at home so that they can, you know, play and have the endurance to sweep 30 minutes because you get tired and stop after five. That's right. not going to work in the job world. Um, and then, like Isabel, one of her tasks every day is to sweep for 10 minutes and I keep her accountable as her therapist. She sends me a picture of what she's done and she brings it to the next therapy session so I can make sure she did it and it's good quality work. And then her mom's not having to nag her to do it over and over. It's on me. You know, I'm the one who she's accountable to. Well, I, I guess one of the questions I have though, I mean, you have these, um, young people who are on the spectrum coming out to hippotherapy, mm -hmm. how often do you run into the challenge of them being afraid of the horses? Uh, occasionally, occasionally, but we have some great horses. So what got me into hippotherapy in general is my love for training animals. I do what I love every day and that's what I want my students to achieve. And because of that, we have horses that will just stand still for a long period of time. I remember we have one, 
young lady, she's, I think she's 24 years old. She's blind and she has autism. So I've worked with service dogs for the blind. Um, I focus on service dogs for autism and PTSD, but I had an individual take me around if I was blind. And it was so scary, Rob. Like, even though I had been in the room, for him to lead me around without seeing, I was scared I was going to trip. So I knew that, her, with, in addition to her having autism, coming to a new spot, there's mm -hmm. horses around. So you hear these, you know, sometimes they'll make a noise like neighing. That was going to be really scary. But her mom was just such an advocate of her doing something because she's been sitting on the couch, you know, not engaged in school anymore. She's past that, you know, 21. Uh, not having friends, not not doing anything for fun, that we really worked with her. And for the first two sessions, it was just the fact of getting her out of the car and scooting up the ramp. She was there to like, stand up and walk, so she would sit down and she'd scoot on her butt. And then we'd get her to the end of the ramp. And I trained a horse to stand for 30 minutes. He didn't move, and he was even trained to sidestep, so he was right against the ramp where she stepped onto the horse. But because she was blind, not only was the horse scary, but like putting weight on one foot and swinging the other foot over, it was not going to happen. That was yeah. way scary. I can't imagine doing that if I couldn't see. So one of our maintenance volunteers, David Buza, put an extra step and secured it onto the ramp. So we had this train to stand, and she was able to step, sit on the step, and she was equal with his back. So she was able to just put her leg out and scoot over onto his back. Good. And that's how we worked step by step through her fear. And when he was finally moving, uh, she had a saddle that she could hold on to. So she felt safe. And we had two sidewalkers next to her, you know, that were just skilled and trained in case anything happened. But the horses we use are also shorter so that I, we can balance people safely on them as they need it. And it was just incredible. So I just try to meet the students wherever they are in their fear and just help them step by step to see that the horses are safe they're okay and all of our horses learn word commands so they back up on command they move sideways on command so sometimes i'll give a child who's scared the reins and i'll say all right you shake the reins and you go and the horses start backing up and once they feel a sense of control and the horse is safe um, we're able to work with them and get them on the horse rather quickly I was just sitting there just visualizing as you were talking, getting on a horse without the ability, the motion to do that, without the ability to see it. I think that would scare me as well. Listen, uh, Chelsea, I love driving my car. It's therapeutic for me, but it's not therapy. There's a difference. What's the difference between therapeutic riding and uh, hippotherapy? Right. So the main difference is what I was talking about before, those functional goals. So in hippotherapy, you're working with a licensed occupational therapist, physical therapist, or a speech therapist, and the horse is a treatment tool. No matter if I'm working with a client in the clinic or if I'm blessed to work with them on our 80 acre working horse farm, you know, the goals are the same. Like Isabel, she's trying to get a job, and part of that is sweeping for 30 minutes with focusing. I can work with the clinic or I can work at it at a dog kennel with real dogs, real horses. Um, Therapeutic riding, you don't have that functionality. So uh, riders, they wouldn't get that home exercise program, you know, the, the tasks to do at home because their goal is to ride that horse, which definitely comes with benefits. Of course, your posture, your strength, um, and confidence comes with that. But the goal is, okay, I'm going to get this horse to go forward. I'm going to get this horse to stop. Versus my clients, we're getting the horse to go without talking to the sidewalkers. We're going to get the horse. You're going to focus so that you can follow three-step directions to get the horse over three poles, um, swiveling in and out of cones, and stop at the back home. Because we're trying to develop your social skills, your focus, and your balance and endurance. So that, that carries over to school, work, or play. Now, uh, organizations like yourself taking the lead, you've been wonderful for people on the spectrum, as well as pathfinders. How is an organization like Pathfinders for Autism been beneficial to you? Oh, uh, I everything I've done at the farm, it has been because of organizations like Pathfinders and the parents. So parents know their children the best. They're the reason I do what I do. They're the advocates. They're the heroes. And 
you guys empower parents. You, you educate them and you help them be who they need to be to help their child achieve the most independence that they can. So I love to use the resources that Pathfinders have um, in order to help our parents just get their kids to succeed and have passion and purpose in life, however that looks to their child. Right. Right. Now, you know, it's been wonderful. Tell folks that are watching right now, they may not be familiar with taking the lead. How can they, you know, be a part of the organization? How can they benefit from the organization in terms of contacting? Absolutely. So um, anyone who's listening, I am happy to give you, you know, a scheduled tour of the farm. I'll, I'll even do a free occupational therapy evaluation session on our course simulator. Um, you can email me at info at takingthelead.org or our number is 443-690-1176. So our website is www.takingthelead.org. So you can find out about our hippotherapy sessions, our vocational sessions, and our service dog program. That's awesome. She is Chelsea Whitaker from taking the lead. She's the founder and COO. Chelsea, thank you so much for your time. And uh, let's continue to get through this thing together. You got it. Thank you so much, Rob. All right.